Hey everyone. So as we approach the, uh, the home stretch of the primary season, uh, I think it's appropriate to talk about how bad our primary system is. Let's talk about that. One of the things that you hear all the time now from commentators is, look at the two front runners, look at Trump, look at Clinton. It's amazing that both of them are underwater in terms of their favorability ratings. Uh, Trump is underwater almost to the tune of 30 percent. Uh, his uh, negatives are around 60 in the 60-ish zone. His positives are in the 30th zone. Uh, we've never seen unfavorables like this before. And how about Hillary Clinton? Well, she's, her unfavorables are around 20 percent, 20 to 25 percent. How do we get this situation with two people who are now the likely nominees of their parties? Well, I'd like to offer my view on this. Now, there are several reasons why we've reached this outcome, but one of the major uh, reasons, in my view, is that nobody votes in primaries. That's right, I'll say it again. Nobody votes in primaries. The voter turnout in our primary system on a good day is around 20%. Uh, on a bad day, it can get much worse. Uh, in 2012, for Republicans, it was in the teens. Um, so when you see headlines that say, record turnout in New Hampshire, record turnout in Iowa, record turnout in Nevada, what they're really talking about are incredibly low numbers of people participating, uh, given the, uh, the vast pool of eligible voters. So when you have only one out of every five people participating in the primary season, that leaves a lot of room, 80% of people to be unhappy with the outcome. Now, obviously, to some extent, you have to blame the people who are not voting. You have to blame apathy. But it's also important to blame the system and how difficult we actually make it for people to participate in the primary season. Let's look at the way the primaries are set up. In fact, I'd like to focus on one state in particular, New York. Now, when we think of voter restrictions, when we think of voter suppression, you know, we think of places like Mississippi, we think of Alabama, uh, we think of Texas. But when it comes to restricting people's ability to participate in the electoral process, New York is no slouch by any measurement. Let's look at the voting rules in New York. First of all, it's a closed primary. That means that if you're unaffiliated, if you're not aligned with either the Democratic or Republican parties, you can't vote in either of those primaries. Now, I can't understand for the life of me why any state would want to have a closed primary. After all, it's the independents who determine the outcome of most elections. Why on earth would you want to exclude their input, their wisdom, their participation in your party's political process? Well, you might ask, well, how much does that really affect the voting anyway? Well, 27% of people in New York are unaffiliated. So 27% of the eligible voters in New York State were locked out of the New York primary. I mean, that is a significant number. And thousands and thousands of those people didn't even realize they were locked out. They went to the polls during the New York primary and found out only at their voting station, oh, no, you're not eligible because you're an unaffiliated voter. Now, suppose I were in New York State and I was an unaffiliated voter and I had gone to the Washington Square Bernie Sanders rally and gotten pretty excited. I'd gone to the Brooklyn Bernie Sanders rally and gotten excited. And I had the wherewithal to know that in my current registration, I could not vote in the Democratic primary. Well, I might say to myself, OK, well, I'm going to switch my registration so I can vote in the primary. Well, you can't do that either. The rule in New York State is that you have to have changed your voter affiliation six months before the primary ever took place. That is, you had to have made the change back in October to be able to vote in mid-April. I mean, how ridiculous, how restrictive, how exclusive 
a rule is that? And how does it further anybody's interest to have such a voting process? There's no same-day registration in New York. There's no early voting in New York. If you wanted an example of how terrible the American voting process is, just look at New York State. I mean, who would ever have thought that a place that considers itself the, the intellectual nerve center of the world would have a voting process so antiquated and so restrictive? So the upshot of all this was that uh, during the New York primary, 19% of people who might have voted in the New York primary actually got a chance to cast a ballot, 19 percent. And this year, the turnout in New York was only exceeded in its lowness by Louisiana. Only Louisiana had a worse voter turnout than New York State. I mean, all New Yorkers should be outraged by that. Um, those regulations should be overturned tomorrow but either through inertia or through apathy or through some sort of conspiracy on the part of the parties where they don't actually want larger numbers of people participating, um, that's not happening. So let's take a look uh, for a moment at some of the states that get it right. Uh, let's start with Oregon. Oregon has no polling places. You don't have to go anywhere to cast a vote in Oregon. It's all mail-in. And because of that, Oregon gets some of the highest voter participation in the country. What happens in Oregon is two weeks before, a little bit more than two weeks before an election, you get a packet in the mail giving you voter instructions. And shortly thereafter, you get a ballot. You then have two weeks to send the ballot in. And it's as simple as that. Uh, you don't have to go to a caucus where you stand around for two hours. Uh, you don't have to be at a polling booth where things get backed up and you spend your whole evening there. Uh, I don't know, but I suspect you probably get a self-addressed stamped envelope uh, with which to submit your ballot. You simply walk to the mailbox and you vote it. That's the way it should be. Um, in Alaska, for example, uh, you can mail in a ballot, you can vote absentee, uh, you can vote early. You can vote same day. You can even get the voting authorities to fax you a ballot that you would then mail in. That's the way it should be. It should be easy to vote. We shouldn't be erecting hurdles that people have to overcome to cast a vote. Now, I've singled out uh, Oregon and Alaska for praise, but their voting procedures don't go anywhere near far enough, as far as I'm concerned. Here's what we should do. We should have voting kiosks in malls. We should have voting kiosks in 7-Elevens. We should have a little voting booth at your Starbucks where you can walk in, order your latte, and cast a ballot. And we should be able to vote from cell phones and computers. I mean, after all, we make all sorts of banking transactions, complicated banking transactions on our phones and our computers and our tablets. And we trust in the security and, and the integrity of the system enough that we do that feeling that those transactions are going to go through faithfully. We make stock transactions uh, on our cell phones these days, and we have every confidence that the stock transaction is going to go through. We pay our taxes with cell phones, with tablets, with computers. And we trust that the security of that process is intact. And we do it without worrying particularly. So if we can do all those things, why can't we simply set up a software system where I can pick up my phone, uh, receive a ballot on my phone, obviously with my encrypted voter ID number and password, and simply fill out a ballot in a matter of a minute on my cell phone. Why do the elderly, the infirm, have to make extraordinary efforts to get to a voting place? Why can't they simply do it on their home phone, their home computer, in some simple manner that would cause them no inconvenience? I have no idea why we haven't instituted such a system. Uh, if it's good enough for American Idol, <laughs> if it's good enough for Bank of America, uh, if it's good enough for the uh, Internal Revenue Service, 
why can't we cast a vote that way? Another thing that I would do is I would get rid of the caucus system completely. I can't even imagine how it's constitutional for a voting process to require people who are elderly, infirm, non-ambulatory, people whose life circumstances would never allow them to spend two hours at a polling place. How could we possibly require those people to participate in a caucus when they have way more important life concerns that they have to deal with? We've gotten rid of literacy tests. We've gotten rid of poll taxes. The existential tax on people who want to participate in a caucus is enormous. In my view, caucuses should be prohibited in every state in the Union. And that means you, Iowa. So to conclude, how wonderful it would be if we could ratchet up the voter turnout in primaries to about 50 percent and ratchet up the voter turnout in general elections to about 70 percent. We still wouldn't be up there with Western Europe, where numbers are typically in the 80s uh, for general elections, but at least we wouldn't be embarrassing ourselves every two, every four years by restrictive voting processes, even while we proclaim ourselves to be the great beacon of democracy. So come on, everyone, we need to overhaul the voting system. I'm Jeff Rowan. Thanks for watching.